Alright, jeans. Ready in Hamesh. Arba Shalosh. Shalosh. Time. Time. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at? Song. Song gets me so hyped. Gets me so pumped to be a mom. Gets me so pumped to leave my children and do stand up on the road. You know what I'm saying? Mama needs out. She is doing January 25th. I've decided to do the Yoohoo Room two shows at Flappers in Burbank. Come see the new hour that I will be uh, doing for Netflix coming very soon. Um, and then January 30th through February 1st, Houston at the Improv, February 14th through 15th, Tampa, Florida at the Improv, February 20th or 29th, San Francisco, March 7th, Pasadena at the Ice House, March 13th and 14th throughout in Miami. That's Miami, Miami Improv, March 26th through 28th, Dallas, April 3rd, Jew Dork Titties, that's New York City, Carolines, April 24th through 25th, Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa, The Funny Bone, June 12th through 13th, Phoenix, Arizona, and then I just added Cleveland, Ohio, June 25th through 27th at Hilarities, and then July 9th through 11th, San Antonio, Texas at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club, the LOL, I don't know, that one. I'm thankful they're having me, but that might win for silliest comedy club name. What do you think, Potter? That's a pretty silly. I'm thinking Dr. Grins is top of the list. And now I'm That's thinking Dr. Grins is pretty. Yeah. And then LOL. Laugh out loud. <laughs> do you think they were like, hey, we're in the zeitgeist. This is kind of cool. Kids are texting this to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets at Christina P. Online. Thank you so much for listening, downloading, supporting the show. So anyways, let's move on. I thought I would share um, some some thoughts. So I uh, I was walking down the street yesterday with Ela Klein, my homie, Teddy Fresh, shout out. And we were, um, we were, we happened upon some youths, some youngsters. They were standing around looking cute. Like that's what you do when you're a teenager. You just get dressed up and you walk the streets because there is, what else is there? That's what we do in big cities. It's what we do in small towns. Right, right. That's all we fucking knew, right? So I'm looking at this group of youngsters and she and I are talking and there's one of them is dressed like, and please Google this, Nadav, so you guys get a really clear picture. Remember Britney Spears' first album where she's dressed like um, jailbait? Is that what that is when you're effing underaged? What's that called? Josh, you know. Yeah. You guys, yeah. yeah. Jailbait. Jailbait's definitely a, a thing. <laughs> yeah. So literally, a baby one more time. Remember, she has the pigtails and like the little skirts and then the knee high socks and then like kitten heels. Right. So I happen upon this group of, of, of teens, teens, adolescents, and they're all dressed kind of Britney ish, but there's one teen. There it is. This was so creepy when it came out, by the way. Like, did I, do you remember when this came out and people were like, yeah, I'm a fan? I mean, I was in middle school, so I'm like, this is dope. Check out this <laughs> older chick. <laughs> right? Like, that's who it's supposed to appeal to, middle schoolers. But it appealed to uh, 28-year-old grown men. And everybody was, you know, uh, fantasizing about this 15-year-old, was supposed to be a 15, 16-year-old girl in front of her locker room. So the point being... Um, I happen upon these group of, do, of, of girls, girls, and one boy, and the boy is not dressed like those guys in the video. The boy is dressed like Brittany in this video. <laughs> and I mean, his body was banging. He had the mini skirt, the knee high socks, the, the furry things on his head. Was and he sure. bare in midriff? Yeah. Wow. Like 100%, this is what. This teenage boy was dressed like, and I know as a boy because of his, you know, the shape of the body and his head was like shaved. And I am, um, I turned to Ela and I was like, you know, being a dick of court who I am. And I was like, what 
the what is going on? I'm like, Ela, do you see this? And she goes, <laughs> she's like, yeah. And I'm like, is this is this what's happening now? And she goes, it means we're officially old. <laughs> like, and I had this epiphany. I was like, yeah, it's officially, I'm officially like that conservative person in the late 60s. And I saw a hippie for the first time. And I was like, these dis these uh, uh, disrespectful heathens like I I was genuinely shocked to see that and I'm not a shockable you know flower and I did I feel my age now because I'm like oh this is what it is like this is this era's punk rock this is this era's hippie this is the era of like rebellion now I had that and I was like god damn like I'm I'm genuinely shocked you know and then I I, um, and that's really like, oh, I'm, I'm really old. And then I also had the simultaneous thought of like, good for this generation. Because for so long, I was so annoyed that there was no rebellion, that there was no putting a brick in it, that they were so fucking complacent. And now I'm like, I'm on board. Is that millennial? Wait, like what's, what's her name? Greta, Greta. Greta, Greta Thunberg. Thunberg, yeah. <laughs> what is she considered? Whatever she is, I'm yeah. down for that. Gen Z. Dude, I'm on board. <laughs> I love this chick. And I that's cool that like gen, I was genuinely like, wow, my cage is rattled a little. Like, good. I like that. So I was excited to to have that feeling finally of like, oh, okay, I'm officially on the other side of things. Um, but I don't know. Are you, are you rattled when you see boys dressed as girls? I mean, not anymore, really. Like, uh, yeah. Right. Except when they're dressed like Brittany to a T, I mean, heels and all. Yeah. You know, I'd probably just see him be like, all right, go get it. Go get it. Homie. <laughs> <I know. laughs> go get it. My dude. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I have that reaction more when I hear music. Oh, I hate today's music. Because there's stuff, like, every now and then I'll just listen to Kiss FM to see, like, what's, uh, what's hot and popping these days. Oh. Uh, and I, everything that I hear, I'm like, this is what they're listening to? Garbage. Like, this is absolutely terrible. This isn't music. Like, I remember, what was that What was that robot shit? Dubstep, when that shit was coming oh, out. Oh, God. But, I mean, I was in college when that came out. I'm like, this is gar. Like, I'm a kid, and this is terrible. <laughs> but to be fair, even when I was a kid, I hated that Top 40 stuff. Anyways, I was never into, I was like, oh, I hate new kids on the block. I hate whatever, Millie Vanilli, you know? Yeah, I'm like, give me that oldies shit. Give me that oldies, homie. What did you listen to? K-Earth 101 growing up. <laughs> 50s music? Fuck yeah, dude. That's what my mom listened to and eventually is like, nah, this shit's pretty banging, dude. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you into the oldies now? Uh... I mean, there's definitely stuff that I listen to that bangs, you know, um, but Angel I've never bang. really been a music, like I've never really been a music person. I've never, like uh, sometimes I hear people that are like, oh, I, I can't live without music. Yeah, if that's me. Yeah. If you told me that I couldn't listen to music for the rest of my life, I'd be like, all right, no big deal. Wow. You're a psycho. Yeah. I think, yeah. You have no soul. Yeah. Wow. People are like, hey, what are you listening to these days? I'm like, God, oh, the one that goes like, tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -tick. like, I don't know the names of stuff. I don't know the names of bands. It's yeah, that's, not important that's to me. That's dark. Yeah, like, my sorry. husband has, he likes music, but he doesn't listen to the words. And I'm the opposite. I have to hear, I have to know what they're talking about. And if it's dumb, I'm like, I'm out, bro. Like, that's why we were talking about on YMH. Um, that song, but is it Big Pun? Yeah, Big Pun, It's So Hard. Yeah, and he loves the song. It's a, It sounds good, but the words are like, and words, and big words wanted, F my wife, big words want to take my life. And it's like, what are you relating to here? Like, or, <laughs> you know? No, but I mean, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the same way. Like, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll listen to something. And I'm like, if the melody is good, I don't really care what they're saying. Yeah, know? yeah, I care. It makes me crazy because I hate stupid stuff. I'd be like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. There, I mean, but there's like Ugh. stuff where it's like, uh, well, what was the first song that happened to me? You remember that Third Eye Blind song? Oh, God. Wish you would step back from that leg. Oh, and so I'm gosh. like, damn, this shit, this shit sound, like, th this shit sounds great. And then like, I don't know, 10 years later, I'm like, no, oh, that's about suicide, isn't it? Yeah, it's so Not depressing. great. <laughs> Not great. No, I can't do that either. Man. Come on. Come on. Uh, so anyway, I'm officially... Um, I'm officially the older generation. I'm officially shocked 
And uh, but I'm liking it. I'm enjoying playing this role. I'm the, I am now the the matriarch. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking that position. Also, I wanted to share um, just some stuff with mom stuff with you because I I don't want. I, I get emails every now and then like asking like, hey, Christina, do you ever feel this way when this happens to your kids? And I don't always address them on the show, but I wanted to share this one is that every time my children get sick, I spiral into a panic. Like if my, oh my God, if one of the kids vomits, forget it. I'm on another planet. I'm already like, I'm convinced that they're, Worst case scenario, we're going to end up in the hospital. I'm going to have to like, oh God. You know, like I'm already worst case. One of them coughs and I'm like, it's pneumonia. I fucking know it. They're dead. You know, um, one of the kids, you know, and, and, but simultaneously now, because I've been through it a s- few times, I'm like, I'll see a notice at school, which makes me crazy. Like they'll put out a notice on the door that there was a case of pneumonia at the preschool and, or in this, in this classroom. And my first thought is always, what dirty little kid brought that shit into this room? And, you know, what parent sends their kid to school with pneumonia, you dick, (laughs) like so that you're infecting everybody? And then, um, but secondly, I'll be like, nah, pneumonia is not that big of a deal. It's fine. But then when it does happen, like when your kid really gets sick, I, I panic, I go through... I go through a lot, dude. Like, I don't sleep very well. And anyway, the two boys both have a cold right now. Tom's in Australia. And uh, I go through, I get into fucking high alert, man. And and anybody listening, if you're going through it, just know that I think it's normal. It's what I do. Um, and that's what alcohol's for. And that's what uh, Xanax is for. You just take it. <sighs> <laughs> so do you take any preca- where if you like hear a cough or something like all right i'm gonna load them up with vitamin c today no. or no because i also simultaneously believe in letting them letting them build up their like i'm their immune systems mm. like i'll be like like yesterday julian was like i'm raisin raisin snack and he found some on the floor and i was like yeah dude just eat those and i let him eat them off the floor because that, that's good for them they need to eat shit on the floor that's how they build immune systems and and i have to say i'm I'm so lucky that my kids have only had garden variety childhood illnesses, you know, knock on wood. There are people who deal with real, real um, illnesses with their children. And I'm, I'm just like, if I, if I had to do that, I would not, I would not survive. Like, I don't know. There's this woman who I went to high school with and her boy has a brain tumor and I followed on. I just like, oh my fucking, God. like if I had to deal with that, I would just fall to pieces so god shout out to anybody that's dealing with like real illness with their children because it's got to be just ugh, heartbreaking anyways moving along we um we had a little discussion before we started rolling today because my kids are sick and they um how do we get into talking about blowing our noses and stuff and how i forget i I forget how it got there stuff that uh uh like just old timey shit. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Like I said, our yeah. shitty parents and our their old timey ways. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I remember like I didn't know Oh no. So I think you said that your mom had a hanky and then I talked about something that my dad did. No, so what my mom would do and what I do is when I'm sick with a cold, I will use the same tissue like all day. And especially if my nose is just runny, 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 like liquidy. You know, I'll blow my nose and then I'll kind of crumple it. And then when I have to blow my nose again, I'll put it in my pocket and then I'll take it out of my pocket, open it up, Ooh. blow in another corner. Mm, nasty as hell. So nasty. And then sometimes I'll even oh open the t- <laughs> <laughs> I'll even open the tissue if it's real watery snot and then let it dry and then reuse it. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, wait, hold on. But you let it dry out so yeah. that it becomes like. Hard and crusty. Yeah. Have you ever? Doesn't that fuck up your nose? Yeah, it's not <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's not good. I'm not saying Ugh. I'm not proud. I'm just saying I get lazy. Like, because you know then, when you're like, sick. You have, but then doesn't like? Do you ever notice they're like, why is my pocket all wet? No. No. Don't care. Because when I'm sick, I'm like, bah, I just want convenience, you know. But what I don't. I, but then I throw that tissue away at the end of the day. At the oh. end of the day. Yeah. 
Ugh. <laughs> but I don't. I won't use a hanky. I think hankies are disgusting. What is different? Different is a hanky you reused, right? Like you. Oh, but what it. are you explain? Like you say, you're explaining the same thing. Yeah, but I. But the hanky never gets thrown away. You put it. In oh, the, so you're saying a one day hanky versus yeah. a lifetime hanky? Yes, a hundred percent. A one day hanky is way less nasty than a forever hanky. Well, a lifetime hanky still <laughs> is like I. I guess that's grosser because. You said that, hold on, you said that your parents had hankies, right? So, so that's total Eastern, I think Eastern Euro and like old world. Like old people have hankies, right? Because it was like a badge of honor. Like I have this hanky. This is good. It has the stitching on there. It's my initial. But that, like yeah. it was a thing that you had. But it's like rough or something. But uh, then a like hanky? you clean it by throwing it like into a into washing, the washing machine. machine. So it bakes in, it bakes boogers into like the rest of your well, shit. Well, let me tell or you. Or you have like a hanky load. Can I tell you how gross, how phobic I am of vomiting and stuff? Like if the kids puke on their sheets, I, I'll be like, just throw them out. Like don't even put that shit in my washing machine. And the same goes for the hanky thing. I'm like, ugh. I, I mean, yeah, you put them in your washing machine and then all the boogers get on your clothes and stuff. Ugh. ugh. Wait, ugh. what do you do when you get sick? Um, well, I learned this trick from my dad and I haven't <laughs> seen anyone else do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like definitely no Americans, but... <laughs> you would do this thing where if you had a runny nose, he would just take a piece of tissue, uh, p- uh, yeah, tissue. Yeah. And he would like kind of turn it around. Uh, yeah, and I know what you're s- talking about. Yeah, and then screw it into his nose. Right. It's like a missile. Like right, a tissue exactly. Missile, so it just then, plugs you know, everything yeah. up, and then as it runs, it just soaks everything, <laughs> and you don't feel it run because it's just going straight into that the is tissue. So fucking disgusting. Uh, well, yeah, when you would take it out, like when you take that tissue out, it gets real foul. It's, but, yeah. I mean, you don't have to like. <laughs> Right. Like you don't have to do that all day. You know, the tissue just grabs everything, but right. it gets uh, nasty as hell. Uh, right. Eating with it in why, is, why would gets you eat with that? It's just it's like a nose tampon. That's so disgusting. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, it is a nose tampon, and sometimes Ugh. you get food in it, and you know what? You just switch it out with a different one, and you Ugh. don't put it in your pocket and save it for later. Ugh. Ugh. One and done. You know? I don't know who's nastier, my all-day tissue hanky or your nose tampon. I know, I know what's worse. What? It's your all-day tissue thing. No, <laughs> that no. is so much grosser. I think your method's nasty. No, because your shit's going into pockets. Yeah, that's but it's nasty. my pocket, not po- other. Just people. a pocket. But then people have to look at you with your nose tampon. You think I'm leaving the house with that thing in my nose? <laughs> <laughs> No, I take it, like, I don't let people see me in public. You know, there's tons of, you know, you have clothes probably that you don't leave the house in and stuff. Like, that's yeah. in that realm yes, of stuff yes. where it's like, yeah, I'm not letting people, you know, see me wear, like, these Crocs outside. I'm not letting these people see me in my robe and shit, you know. I'm I not know. letting people see, like, a piece of tissue screwed into my right nostril. No, that's private. That's private, Nadal. <laughs> yeah, that's now, private stuff. Now, have you done that? I've seen people do this when, when they're sick with a cold. They will use their T-shirt to blow their nose into have you seen that uh, one? I've had I, friends do that one. I haven't. No, I haven't <laughs> done that. Um, but I have done like desperate nose blows. Like I've done. Yeah. I've definitely yeah. done snot rockets in public that never turn out well. <laughs> they always just get straight on my shirt accidentally or my uh, pants or something. Snot rockets are for the shower only, I feel. Or desperate situations. I mean, I've done well, something. How would you be desperate to snot rocket? <laughs> Because like, I mean, don't, don't you ever like like breathe in and out of your nose, and you just feel that yeah. one thing going back and forth? You're like, oh, yeah, God, yeah, get this fucker but, out. But then I pick my nose. I put my finger up there. Yeah, but some of us don't have long nails, Christina. <laughs> we can't get to that gold, so we have to use other <laughs> methods of air pressure. Oh my! God. I can but, see I mean, you doing that. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I currently still do that. If if I'm not with people that I know will judge me, I'll do that. Yeah. Or if I'm with someone that I want to gross out, I'll do that. Yeah. Um. But in my most desperate situation. I think the most desperate nose blow I've ever done. Uh, I think I was eating fast food or something. Ugh. And uh, <laughs> I did it. I used up all my napkins. I couldn't find a tissue. So I just took the brown bag that the fast food came <laughs> in and I tore it up. And then I blew my nose into that. And it was so rough that I like hurt my nose. Like I felt it for like a day after that. <laughs> I've never done so that rough. one before. Yeah, I've never I, done I, that. I, uh, well, one and done. I did that once and I felt so, yeah. I felt like such a piece of human garbage. I was like, I can't yeah. do that again, even isn't if no it, one's watching. Isn't it amazing the disgusting stuff we do when we're alone and nobody is watching? Yeah, that's why it's dangerous to be alone by yourself for the, for a long that's period right. of time. You that's get what, weirder and weirder. That's what Tom and I say. Like, there's a certain age where if people don't get married and don't start a life, they turn into what we call wags. 
weird alone guys or weird alone girls. Like I'd say your mid 40s is wag territory where you can't, there's no turning back. Like you can't partner up with somebody because you're so used to your own routines and your own disgusting stuff. I think about it so much when Tom is gone. What was I doing today? And I'm like, oh man, this is so gross. Oh, so it's possible to turn into a wag even if you're in a relationship. <laughs> it's a lot harder. It's harder. Right. There's more checks and balances. Yeah. Like Tom and I just do that stuff in front of each other. Like, <laughs> you know, we're open farters. We're op we don't poop with the door open, but we do a lot of that stuff. Oh, here's what I did the other day. Oh my God. This has to be the grossest thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm so thankful I was alone. It's so nasty. So I was eating tilapia fish and I put a bunch of Cholula on it. Like I love to hurt myself with hot sauce. And I, I, I was I finished my meal. I go upstairs and there's like tilapia in my teeth. So I'm flossing. I'm flossing. Oh my God. This is so, it, my, uh, and I floss and I flick up a piece of tilapia with Cholula, like <laughs> spicy fish. And a chunk of it goes in my eye. And now I've got spicy fish in my eye. And I'm like, oh, it burns. Like, I can't. <laughs> And then I had to remember what you did in chemistry class. Remember, like, you had the emergency eye wash. And I washed my eyes. And I was like, fuck, that was so nasty. But I could feel, like, I could feel the Cholula tilapia in my eye. Like Were you more worried about the Cholula touching your eye or yeah. the old fish touching your eye? Both of it. It's <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to have some kind of disease from it, like aluminum poisoning, or I don't know. But I, at that moment, I was so thankful that Tom wasn't there for that because I didn't want to share. You know, like, oh, that was nasty. That was one of those alone things that just happened to me that nobody really needs to know. But now you guys get to know, so that's fun. <laughs> have you ever flo you know, Do you floss? Um, not, I mean, not every day, but you know, I, I, you I floss should. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the grossest. I'm sure Josh no, yeah, when you is have, never. When you have big old chunks come out, you're like, Jesus, uh, how long is that there for? How long? <laughs> like, no. And how, and there were years where I didn't floss. I'm like, this just stayed in between my teeth. Like, ugh. No, sometimes ugh. It, it, it really alarms me how I'm like, no, you know what? I have like these dental like picks over here. I'll like, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a once over. Yeah. And you'll go into one part of your mouth, and then all of a sudden you'll feel a relief of all this pressure. And you're yeah. like, I didn't even notice that there was oh. pressure there. That's wild. <laughs> it's so gross. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nasty. God, it's so gross being human. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Okay. Ugh. Please tell me the grossest thing you do alone. I want to know what you guys... I mean, I know it's masturbation related for men. I know it. So let's 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 forget. Or I mean, yeah, hygiene related, um, food related. Yeah, what's the nastiest thing you do by yourself? Yeah, what's the <laughs> what what's the thing that you try and keep from your significant other or people yeah. in your life? What do you do that you don't want other people seeing you do? Yeah, that's a good one. I like to pop pimples in private. Tom and I are not the kind to do that for like really together. Like, I'll do it for him if I see something I'm like, ugh, come here. Because men don't see that, yeah, that shit. That I don't understand is popping uh, your significant other's pimples. Oh, there's like TV shows dedicated to people <laughs> oh, watching man, that stuff. losing his mind. Are you not into that, Josh? You don't You don't like to have other people touch your pimples and you don't? I don't un I don't understand it, definitely. But po Potter, you, you well, seem pretty. I'll, I'll tell you what. After popping out two of his children... You, you know what I mean? Like, I've had his DNA grow inside of me. I'm like, dude, you and I are like, you know, you're so, the same yeah, but person. Like, so you didn't pop his pimples before you had kids? I mean, I did. Like, if I saw every now and then one that needed a dressing, I would just, like, do it without telling him, like, quickly. Without telling yeah, him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, be you like, would just go in and quickly? Yeah. And he'd be like, <laughs> ow, what the fuck? And I'm like, you had, like, a disgusting pussy thing on your, your face or your neck. I'm helping you, <laughs> dummy. And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you do when you're married like, oh, Christina yeah. why are you hurting me yeah you groom your your mate don't you know that we're gorillas we're primates so that's your job as the wife is to groom your husband that's why I get so upset when I see these husbands walking around in the world dressed like nerds you know you see like khaki dad he's got his khakis on and then like brown sandals I'm like don't you have a woman who straightens your shit out bro you're not supposed to leave the house looking like this this is what this is our job is to keep the man looking like a human being and, and you know when you see men their teeth are all jacked and their hair is jacked they got ear ear hair and it means the wife doesn't love you anymore if she's not grooming you so that's how you know your marriage is 
over. True story. Potter, what were you going to say? I, I cut you off, Josh. Were you going to say you're into that? Or you can't even imagine that intimacy level? No, I uh, am going to just puke from this whole show between <laughs> your fucking <laughs> tissues and... God, I use all the tissues. I don't care. Yeah. I'll use a whole fucking box. Wow. I didn't realize you're you're much more hygienic than I think, than I thought. I guess. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm just going to puke uh, <laughs> in the back of here. <laughs> I do feel like your guys' masturbation have... Okay, let's not talk about it. Uh, let, let's move <laughs> along. That's for the YMH. It's not for this show. I'm going to do some follow-ups. Lots to follow up on. I have really been enjoying... Your terrible meals. Really enjoying. I don't think anything gives me... I love knowing what people do in private. I love knowing what you're eating. Oh, let's start with those. Latchkey Kid Food Ramen or Raymond. Raymond noodles. Hi, Mommy. Here's the ramen recipe straight from my caboodle. Oriental flavor, frozen peas, topped with one piece of ultra-processed craft cheese. Oh, the cheese would melt and somehow become part of the broth. Dirt nasty. Um, let me think about that. It's really, yeah, it's like putting a cream base in your soup, right? The yeah, cheese. that's one of those. If it doesn't melt, that's nasty as hell. Yeah. But if it does melt and then it just like makes the, the, the broth thicker. Yeah. That sounds like something I could fuck with. Yeah, I could fuck with too. It's like cream and peas. Now you were supposed to bring in a nasty treat for me. What happened? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I came in today and I was like, oh, right. I need to make Christina <laughs> eat something really disgusting on the show because we were talking about the, uh, the peanut butter, mustard, and uh, cheese sandwich. Yeah. And uh, I went to the grocery store and I totally uh, had a brain fart and I left my wallet at the studio. Uh, is there nothing so worse you, than that? So you lucked out, you know? I did. So next week we're going to try that one. Yeah, we're going to have you try that that gross thing. And apparently um, Oriental Flavor, it is still called Oriental Flavor. Is that right? <laughs> I, I, I'm we, pretty sure, yeah. We have not updated that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was the rule that you could only call things Oriental. Yes. Uh, and and not people. Right. But like, or is Oriental in general a thing that you can't really say anymore? I, f I want to say I feel as though Oriental in general sounds antiquated. It, it sounds like saying colored. Right. You know, it's yeah, like, that, it's yeah. I don't really. Can you say Oriental rug? I mean, that's the main thing that I would hear it with. I, think. I don't know. But you know what I know? When I was in South Africa, they still say colored for for black people, colored, whites, and then, oh, wait. Yeah, black, colored, and white. Like, they still do that. So I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. Well, you know, I mean, Americans no, you know, are more. Other places are just behind us. I mean, I know in behind Hebrew us. there's a lot of really antiquated language <laughs> where when you translate to English, it doesn't translate well. Right. We're like, that's just what we call them. I don't know what you want. But I think America is behind, let's say, the Netherlands. Or West, a lot of Western Europe, we're not the leaders in all social stuff. Wouldn't you say? I feel like we're behind Western Europe in a lot of ways. Um, They're pretty progressive, yeah. like the you know. Anyway, like that oh, Greta, yeah, like, Greta Thunberg is from <laughs> uh, uh, Norway, right? Uh, and I think yeah. that uh, that couple that was like, "Hey, we're not gendering our kid; we're letting yeah. them gender themselves." I think that was Norway or maybe Sweden, right? One of the Nether yeah, right? The, the white European countries. Oh, will you Google Oriental flavor ramen? I'm now I'm dying to know why that's okay because I do feel like it's just it's just an old like wouldn't you say? Asian or I don't know. There's so much sodium in these ramen noodles. That's really the problem. Uh, I don't know. What is like or tape? Yeah, it's still yeah. called Oriental. Yeah, it's still called Oriental. It looks like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess we're doing it. All right. Shit. Yeah. Nothing about why are we still calling it Oriental? Just like, it's like this yeah. is a good flavor. And it's a it's an Asian company, Maruchan. So hey, all right. Uh, okay, so let's move along. I do like Oriental flavor is my favorite ramen flavor, I have to say. I like it the most. Um, okay, also, my mom regular made me fried bologna sandwiches with ketchup. Oh, standard, right? I mean, yeah, that just that dope. just seems like a like a like a different version of like a take on a hamburger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, uh, Miranda, she writes, not with bougie ring bologna. 
but with the nasty lips and assholes bologna. I made the mistake of reading the ingredients of said bologna as an adult and had an existential crisis in the supermarket. <laughs> Talk about a mom fail. Keep them high and tight, Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. Yeah, um, I like, I'm a huge fan of processed meats. My family grew up on them. Hungarians love them. I grew up, you know, in Hungary, you don't have sugar sweet breakfast. Like you don't have pancakes. Like Europeans usually eat, you know, salami, sausage, cut up meats and cheese and bread so i am a huge fan of any processed meats israelis are right aren't you guys vegetarians uh no not vegetarians but like uh like the breakfast would be like smoked fish yes. some sort of cheese some sort of bread some salads now wait a minute though because i was eating it are you sure you guys aren't vegetarians more you don't lean towards because how come uh, israeli restaurants a lot of them are hmm yeah. I mean, they're kosher. Is that what that is? Like, no, but that's obviously. not vegetarian. Like, no. it's uh, being kosher is just like, was it killed a certain way? Is it a certain type of animal? And right. is it being mixed with cheese? All right, I gotta talk to Ela about this because she's mostly vegetarian. She's very healthy. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, that's just Hila. You know, that's not. I know. All maybe Israelis. it's not all you guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, moms, dads, are you interested in learning more about how children develop? Check out the Princeton and NYU Discoveries in Action Lab or Panda, a virtual lab where researchers hope to discover how kids learn about the world. Panda offers quick and fun games for families with children ages 3 to 10. Participate from your home computer anytime, and as a thank you for contributing to science, you will earn a $10 Amazon gift card. Head to www discoveriesinaction.org and sign up to find out more. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Discoveries in Action. Great. Okay, so here's another one. Um, okay, my mom my mom is away. When my mom is away, we'd like to eat my dad's favorite snack passed on to me, chip sandwiches. Bread, handful of chips, bread, smash it down and eat up. Not bad, that's pretty common. That's just potato. It's like starch on starch. Another snack favorite, ketchup sandwich. One slice of bread, put on ketchup, fold and eat. I have to admit, I did that too. Ooh. I I love ketchup on anything, especially that white Wonder Bread, that horrible with ketchup on it. I agree. That is delicious. I had a friend who went through a poor phase where he would do barbecue sauce sandwiches. <laughs> the, the same concept, but with barbecue sauce instead of ketchup. Hey. I love barbecue sauce so much. I would put that on anything. <laughs> like, basically, ribs are just an excuse for me to eat barbecue sauce. It's just I a delivery love, system yeah. for oh, barbecue sauce? Come on now. <laughs> My favorite is that Dreamland barbecue from, uh, what is it, Alabama, right? Dreamland. Dreamland. Oh, get your, I order that stuff on the internet from this place called Dreamland. I think it's in Alabama. And to, that, to me, is just, there it is, Dreamland. Get your life and order yourself some Dreamland. It is so good. It's sweet and tart at the same time. That's the kind I like. I don't like a dry rub. I like a nice, sweet, tart one. Ooh, Dreamland. Yeah, Alabama. I remember a while ago I had something called Stubbs Moppin' Sauce. That was pretty good. <laughs> Studs. Stubbs. Oh, Stubbs. Yes, yes, yes. But I remember Stubbs. The, but the la I only got the label looked so weird and dated and racist. Let me see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they like, call it mopping sauce anymore. Mopping, like you mop up, you mop up the sauce, right? Yeah, you mop up the grease. Well, mop the, it up. Oh yeah, that's good. I like stubs too. Yeah, yeah, that stuff's good. Fucking love barbecue sauce, man. Yeah, it's like so tangy. Ugh. Mm -mm. I don't even want to know what's in it. Have you ever made your own barbecue sauce? No. Have you? Uh, no. I've I've been like there was a moment where I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make my own sauce, and then it's like, wow, this is a thing. You sounded like Fed Smoker right there. I'm gonna make my own yeah. Sometimes I catch it. myself <laughs> slipping into it. Like <laughs> on my on my vacation, I me and my buddy were just talking uh, to each other like that. It was terrible. Oh god. Yeah. Okay, here's a disgusting winter snack. Uh, I have a nasty food that my dad would make for us when I was little. Now, dads, not surprisingly, especially single dads, are the originators of the nastiest foods. Uh, my dad was huge on tiny Vienna sausages. We had a stock supply of those in cans. Uh, SpaghettiOs in the cans, Chef Boyardee in the cans. I ate out of cans and frozen meals a lot uh, because of my dad. My dad would, f would go to the Hungarian market in the valley here and he would buy Wierschli, which is hot dog, uh, German hot dogs. And then he would buy like 
just a huge bundle of long hot dogs and then freeze them. So whenever I needed to eat, I could go in the freezer and get out a nice German hot dog and microwave that. Mm-mm, wholesome good. Thank you, Dad. Okay, so dad stuff. Now, okay, okay, here we go. When I was little, growing up, my siblings and I would be jumping up and down in delight to see it snowing outside. Not for the reasons most kids did, such as sledding and building snowmen. It was because my dad would make us snow cream. He would put a big bowl out in our backyard and let it fill up with fresh fallen snow. He would then bring it in a few hours later and put milk, sugar, vanilla, and coffee creamer in it. He would then give it to our disgusting little sugar bodies and we would gobble it up. To this day, whenever I see snow, I get a sweet vanilla craving. Was my father a genius or a complete TikTok for creating this? What do you think? I know. That's, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's ingenuity, definitely. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, making snow cones with the ingredients you got. It's a snow cone. But it's not, because snow cones generally are, uh, you know, fruit flavored. Right. But this one is French vanilla creamed flavored. Well, I, the only thing I'm opposed to is the coffee creamer. That's nasty. Like, you don't want to just eat coffee creamer. I mean, turning it into a dessert is pretty interesting. Interesting. And also, is it, because I'm not familiar, I've never, I didn't grow up with snow. Is it okay to eat snow? Like, a lot of it like that? That is it I don't clean? know. clean? Josh, you're from a cold oh. climate. Nope, uh, he says it's not okay. <laughs> Do you just drink gallons of rainwater? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Right, that would be essentially like leaving out a bowl when it rains uh, and then drinking rainwater. Right, there's all sorts of shit in it. Shit. Like bugs. if you collected rainwater, you'd see like little things of black in there probably. Of course. Some dirt. Right, because there's a finite amount of water in the universe, I mean, in our world, let's say, so it all gets recycled, you know, the moisture gets evaporated, turns into rain or snow back down again, and it's just recycled. So, yeah, yeah, right? that's yeah, Ugh. that's na- yeah, that's nasty as hell, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll put my tongue out and I'll get a couple drops in my mouth, but if someone gave me a <laughs> cup full of rainwater and was like, "Drink this," that's true. I'm like, nah, dog. Nah, dog. But what if I put some vanilla creamer in it? And well, now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> <laughs> but what if I made that shit vanilla, bro? <laughs> we talking about vanilla, dog? We're talking about vanilla? Talking about vanilla, dog? Okay. I'm All down. Right. Okay. All right, this one's great. Poor man's cheesecake. I grew up with six siblings, so we had, uh, so we had the same four Costco snacks on rotation for essentially my whole life. So I had to get creative, just like in jail. <laughs> We also weren't allowed to cook actual food, so everything had to be made in the microwave or the toaster oven. Yep, that's how that's how latchkey kid nastiness starts. Is because you're not allowed to use the stove, so you, your resources are microwave. Toaster oven is even a little dicey for a latchkey kid. So good. I used to make what I called a poor man's cheesecake. You get an Eggo waffle, melt chocolate chips into the little waffle wells, and then spread cream cheese over the top. It was actually pretty boss. Keep them high and tight. Yeah, oh, that sounds good. I'd do that today. I would have that regularly for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? You do that? I don't know if it was an Israeli thing. Um, I, I just remembered it. We would have e- Eggo waffles. Yeah. And then you spread some cream cheese on it. Uh. And then syrup on top. Uh, and it was like the best fuck. You could have it for breakfast or dessert. You yeah, decide. it sounds <laughs> well. Eggo waffles are a dessert. Let's be clear. I, are they? Yes. Uh, I mean, the, the syrup infused ones. Yeah. I could t- no, actually, that's that's not really it's making all my argument. sugar. Yeah, because you're having syrup for breakfast anyways. Well, I remember when I was pregnant with Ellis, and I would wake up starving in the middle of the night, and I would eat Eggo waffles. <laughs> and my, I went to, I had to go to a nutritionist because I'd gained so much weight, and they were like. She's like, so what are you eating in the middle of the night? I'm like, oh, just waffles. She's like, that's horrible. That's the worst thing you could be doing for yourself. I'm like, it's not the worst. You're exaggerating, but it's not good. <laughs> that's not the go-to snack. Okay. Um, oh, I love this. Since I, I since we're kind of on a roll with, um, I oh, no, no, let's do follow-ups. Okay, follow-ups. Fighting siblings. Hey there, love the show. I'm a 35-year-old female in Colorado. I never wanted kids and still don't want kids, but I love the show and find it super entertaining. That is, we were just talking about that. how funny that so many people who aren't, aren't parents love this show. So great. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. I was listening to episode 27 with the caller asking for help about her younger son beating up the older son. 
My mom once told me about something she did with my sister's two boys. The younger boy kept punching the older boy who never even considered punching back. After trying everything else and nothing working, my mom finally told the younger son if he hit the older boy one more time, she would give him permission to hit back. One punch for one punch. He never punched again. Thanks for the show, Alexandra. That's a good theory. I like that. Yeah. I would do that with my boys. Yeah, because I yeah. think the you know the younger kid probably just thinks that they're being that they're protected from any type of pain. Oh. And so when you let them know, it's like, hey, just so you know, mom decides that your brother could hit you back it's like oh damn, no one's gonna yell at him if yeah they they hit me oh no yeah i like that i'm all about teaching real life consequences like i think the reason i don't talk a lot of smack to people i think a, let's just say i've been in physical fights before with people <laughs> that i have talked shit to in junior high so i'm like oh I'll get hit in the mouth if I say something crazy to somebody in face to face. And I think if you don't learn that lesson, you're going to end up really getting messed up later in life. So this is a great lesson to teach kids and uh, good. I'm going to do that. But the older boy hits the younger one right now. And I just punish the older boy for doing that because you can't let them hit. Right. Because Julian can't hit back yet. Oh, he will. Yeah. And when he can, I'll be like, well, I'll give permission to Julian to hit your ass yeah, back. Just so you know, mom's so going to put know. you in a full Nelson and Julian's just going to get a clean, <laughs> a clean shot to the face. I don't know. They're not too violent, my boys, yet. Okay. This is a follow up on the division of duties. I got a lot of feedback on dads actually doing stuff around the house. And I'm really excited. I, um, I did weep as I read a lot of them because I was like, what? This is real. Division of duties. In my house, we both work. She has a senior corp HR job, and I'm a consultant with more flexible schedule. I get up with the kids virtually every day, make breakfast, get them ready, and go to school. On the weekends, I let my wife sleep in. Wow. I make Oreo pancakes for my kids, 12 and 9, then take them to soccer and ref all their games. I do all the dishes, cook dinner 50% of the time, and 80% of the grocery shopping. I mean, are you a sister wife? I love you. This is the only way I would be a sister wife is if, because uh, you know you know that show I'm talking about where all these fat women are with the, the nasty guy with the hair? Is that a polyamory thing? Please, Google sister wives. It's on TLC. Your guys are going to die when you see this guy. So the premise is, this guy, I guess they live in Utah, and he's got the plural. I know, and you know, and look, 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 look. This is great. So they're all fighting for this guy's affection, which, look, he ain't my style. You know, he's got, what do you say he looks like, Nadal? Uh, he's not for Ooh, me. He looks like the brother. <sighs> he looks like he has a really successful brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, like, like to his me, brother who has the good looks is the one who's successful. He's just like I'm doing all right. I got five wives. Yeah, he's not my cup of tea, but I can see what's happened here. Here's what's happened. This guy got into this life. Look at him. Look at him smiling with these bitches. So, this guy was like, yeah, he, he's fat. He's I don't think he's a catch. He's a he's a you know white guy with this long silly blonde hair and his silly beard, and he he thinks he's cool because he wears like a. <clears throat> He's got like Garth Brooks kind of vibe, you know, the blazer. He's got a blazer and a shirt. Got a good mushroom cut. Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of 90s. Any hoodles. Here's what happens. He gets one wife, the first wife. She starts pumping out kids and she gets fat. So then he goes, well, I'm going to go to the next wife, right? I'm going to get me a skinny younger model. Then they pump out a few kids and then she gets fat. And they go, well, I'm going to go get the other wife. They pump out, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll notice the youngest, newest wife is always a thin one <laughs> and the rest are fat because they've had kids with this loser and they're all fighting for his affection and attention that's the show i wish you would come in my bed tonight and then it's like you know what but then i look at it from a help perspective and i'm like it kind of would be dope to have four other women helping me out with my kids all the time because you know but I wouldn't want to fight over this clown. Ugh, but imagine the helpfulness of having four other bitches around to help you change diapers. And oh, it'd be just great. It would be great. Yeah, see? 
The skinny one's always pregnant. Yeah, she ain't gonna be skinny much longer after she pumps out five more of his fucking brood. Ugh. Anyways, so this this email was so wonderful. Now he writes this part. This part makes me cry. FYI, I haven't gotten a BJ in at least seven years. Uh, I think your wife owes you one. Can you play this for her? <laughs> Mantra. One thing I have been doing since the kids started school, I ask them, what are we going to do today? And the response we evolved to is learn lots, listen to my teachers, be nice to my friends, try my very hardest to be the best kid in school, eat a big lunch and have fun. I think this is a great way to level set our expectations for them every day and start them with a positive attitude. Kurt, well, that's a really nice way. I do something similar with, with the E-man. When I drop him off, I go, are we going to have a good attitude? Yes. Are we going to make friends? Yes. Wow, this guy hasn't gotten a BJ for seven years and he does all this shit? That's nutty, dude. Wow. I don't know what to say. I feel like there are some mar some marriages like that, right? Where the guy does more and the woman is like, you fucking do this. I don't know. Well, what's what good advice? I mean, what's good advice? Let's say hypothetically. Yeah. Is he asking? You didn't give Tom a beach for seven years. Oh, my God. What would be a good way for him to approach you and ask for oh, it where he, you wouldn't get mad? He wouldn't let that happen. <laughs> he would have dismembered my body. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, if my husband doesn't have intercourse, uh, uh, no, it doesn't go down like that in our house. It just wouldn't. We'd be divorced. No effing way, man. So, okay, so uh, let's no way. adjust the hypothetical a bit where, you know, say he wants more BJs. What's a good way for him to ask for more BJs than he's currently getting? Right, right, right. Um, he usually is smart, and he'll ask me when I'm amenable, like, if we're joking, and I'll be like, uh, oh, for instance, like if we're on like the small world ride at Disneyland, and there's tons of kids everywhere. <laughs> and how like we were joking and I was like, babe, babe, what if I just gave you a fucking hand job in the small world? Like, how weird would that be? Do you think people have done that? Do you think that's happening right now? You know, and I always thought and he would he if if that was he probably used that opportunity to be like, yeah, why don't you suck on it right now? And then he'd be like, no, really, I think you should suck on it more. I really want that. And I'll be like, all right. Like that's how we, <laughs> that's how we get into serious topics is through the inappropriate. <laughs> is that what everybody does? No. Yeah. I, I did say that on small world. Cause you think about it and how many people are masturbating on rides at Disneyland? Probably lots that you don't even know about. And there's got to be a team. Probably lots. Well, yeah, it's dark <laughs> and there's some pervert that goes there. You know what I mean? It's gotta happen. Probably lots. Let me put it in perspective. When we went on the Haunted Mansion, I was with um, a, an employee there, and I said, what's the weirdest stuff that's happened on this ride? She goes, you wouldn't believe it, but people want their ashes spread on the Haunted Mansion. I swear, on the Haunted Mansion. She goes, we have caught so many people bringing in their loved one's ashes to spread on the ride. Like, that's, that's a huge problem for us. <laughs> like, what? Really jammed up the gears. Yeah, <laughs> to have human remains on the <laughs> ride. So if people are bringing in ashes, and that's highly yeah. inappropriate, ashes imagine. And, ashes and jizz, it's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like imagine what, you know, there's horny teenagers that are on these rides, and I don't know, I just imagine people when they're, when they're dark and nobody's watching them, like what are they up to? Yeah. That's why I was joking at Tom, I'm like, what if I just fucking gave you a hand drop on this ride? People just want to look into <clears> a mirror <throat> and jerk off, like <laughs> with seeing a ghost next to them, I don't <laughs> Yes, yes, somebody wants that so much. Somebody does, the dog. I don't think, I don't, I, does it happen? Okay. Yes. Does it happen lots? I don't know about that. Watch the emails roll in. Yeah, if you've Watch jerked them. off on the Haunted Mansion ride, uh, go ahead <laughs> and uh, email us about it. <laughs> or you've gotten a handy. Where are my beach. moms at? At gmail.com. Or leave a voicemail at 213-375-5184. A <laughs> 100%. And 100%. Remember Steve-O ejaculated while jumping out of an airplane? Yeah, but he's a special case, and I don't <laughs> think anyone else in the world has done that. <laughs> Maybe not jump out of an airplane, but there is some sick mofo right now being like, dude, I want you to give me a handy on Space Mountain, on, on this roller coaster, Look, or on yeah. the fair. I'm yes. not arguing that it doesn't happen. I am arguing that it doesn't happen lots. It happens every minute of I every day. I don't think so. Uh, 
Yeah. I yeah. would imagine that, like, yeah. the fact that the person said the ashes, I think ashes happens more than jerking off. And how often does the ashes thing happen? It, no way. No way do ashes happen more than sex things. Mm. I'm going to go with masturbating or yeah or, or beaches or handies happens a lot because you're always in pairs on those doom buggies and stuff yeah what do you think potter i've definitely fingered some people on some ferris wheels see, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> or other rides uh see? anything that's like a go around situation <laughs> that's what i'm saying haven't you been to a state fair everyone's getting fingered <laughs> are different. Everybody's Haunted mansion rides. <laughs> everybody's getting fingered on the Ferris wheel. <laughs> That's what we've learned today on where my mom's at. It's true. That's a perfect place to get fingered is on a Ferris wheel. Well, yeah. I mean, you're in a cage, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, privacy. People, yeah. You've got you've got your popcorn. You've got your snacks. Towels. Yeah. yeah, I think on a Ferris wheel is probably the easiest to get it done. Yeah. Haunted Mansion, and it's a small world. I don't know. If I had to give a hand job in Disneyland, I would pick Haunted Mansion. It's so dark. It's <laughs> so dark. It's the There's darkest. There's so ride. many mirrors though, yeah, and the chairs keep on swiveling. Where you like see, <laughs> you see the other people in the other cars. You're like, oh damn, they're getting down. And then you look on the other side, and you're seeing them the other <laughs> cart throwing ashes all over the place. <laughs> Not that I would do it. But I know it's tough because you want to be hidden from all the kids. Yeah, you know, I'd imagine that's a big, see. yeah, because then, then a small, I mean, not a small problem, but then a problem turns into a big problem once you do it in front of kids. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. Anyways, uh, let us know how many times you've uh, masturbated on a ride at <laughs> I know you have, you sick animals. Okay, I asked for single dad hacks because my dad... Had a few great ones um, when I lived alone with him. Single dads are very resourceful, a.k.a. lazy. So, uh, downstairs bathroom. This says, hello, my name is Jack, and I am 18 years old. I may not be a single dad, but I did have a single dad. So, my dad has many hacks. One of them was he would always bring his own salt shaker into the movies for popcorn. I do that. I've done that before because there's never enough salt when you go to salt your popcorn at the station right well yeah then I feel get one it, layer of salt exactly Ugh. yeah it's like you need a you need some sort of like mid container injector same yeah. thing with butter you know it's like you have no. to go and put it on the top and then you have to go back and then once you get to the middle you're like oh this popcorn's dry i need some yeah. more butter shit well i've seen some places some movie theaters where they do the half fill and then they butter it and then they do a full fill mm. and then they butter it but I agree, there needs to be a double salting mechanism. Mm -hmm. I would bring in my own salt. I've done that. And now Sarah Tiana, good friend of mine, writer right now on Spade's show, T-Bone would bring in her own ranch. Oh. Sprinkles. And I know you love ranch. Okay. Well, wait, what's her brand? This, uh, I, I'm, uh, shit. I got to text her. I'll, I'll find oh, out. Is she a Newman's or a Hidden Valley? I'm sure Hidden Valley, Ooh. and I'm sure, but but it's in a it's like the powder. Do you know what I'm saying? That you can put on popcorn. Whoa! Yeah, what? there's a powder ranch powder you can buy, and that's what she would sprinkle it on in the movie theaters. Whoa! Yeah, yeah I think I've been with I her. I did not when she's even think it. of just using the hit. Okay, well, Hidden Valley powder is a little. Oh no, no, sorry, no. So it's actually it's stuff you can buy that's made to sprinkle on foods and oh stuff. so it's meant to be that she's not repurposing something in a way it's not supposed to be used no to. no it's actually like a thing you can buy that it's meant to mm. be shaken onto for flavoring things i've seen yeah. people also put like you know the the pepper grinders yeah i've seen people put doritos in there where they put like the <laughs> cool ranch doritos or the nacho cheese doritos and then that's just like a seasoning now oh my god which doesn't sound terrible no i'm really into that mm. wait we need to get on this yeah can Here, I, you know what? I'll get I'll get a pepper grinder full of yeah. Doritos for you, and we'll sprinkle it onto the uh, onto the mustard, cheese, uh, and peanut butter. Oh, sandwich. thanks, thanks, <laughs> thank you. I was I thought you were gonna say we could sprinkle it onto like kale, and then that way we could eat kale. I mean, you know what? That's a better hack. Yeah, let's do that. That's how you trick your body into getting vegetables in you. I know. Is there any better flavor than Cool Ranch Dorito? Yeah, nacho cheese Dorito. No. Cool Ranch is no. nasty as hell. What? I don't understand. Like, if you... Mm. But you're a lover of ranch. Yeah, not Cool Ranch. 
Cool Ranch. Oh, I don't know. Wow. Cool Ranch is so much different. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. <sighs> Who are you? Cool Ranch Dorito is my, f- that's, that's my jam, bro. I don't know. It just seems like the lesser of the two. You know, I'll eat a Cool Ranch, but not if there's a nacho cheese lying around. Ugh. I, I think not, no. no. Nacho cheese sucks. Nacho cheese Dorito flavor is all right. I know. it's. It always smelled like B.O. to me, though, the bag. Of, the nacho cheese? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It always smelled nasty, like dirty. Hmm. Well, you're nasty. That's all. Yeah, well, you I'm know, not surprised by that. You know what I can't get into is hot Cheetos. I cannot get into that. Uh, those are okay. I got to try again. I have to force myself back into hot it. Hot Cheetos are definitely better than normal Cheetos. Really? I think so. Get out of your damn mind. Well, yeah, because I feel like like there's no mechanism to keep me from not eating all of the normal Cheetos. <laughs> so I feel really disgusting afterwards, but with the spicy Cheetos... It's like, oh, you have too you, much of this. It's going to hurt coming out. It's going to hurt. It's gonna Do you hurt. remember, I don't know, you might be too young, and I was very young when it came out. Because they realized that humanity is a bunch of pigs who can't stop themselves, <laughs> they put in a product in chips called Olean or Olestra. Mm. And basically what it would do is that you could eat the entire bag of chips, but... <laughs> Your body wouldn't digest the fat and you would immediately have diarrhea. Ugh. <laughs> yes. Would you Google Olean? Olean chips or Olestra. And it was a big deal because it was like, yeah, dude, you can just eat whatever you want, but you're going to, your body won't be able to process the fat that's in this product and you will just get <laughs> those gut wrenching Olestra chips from the 90s. That's what it says. <laughs> Aline, there they are. Wow, it's called Wow. You've got diarrhea. Those are the names that chips. Oh wow! It says those chips from the '90s might have been good for us. Yeah, the molecule has the same taste and mouthfeel as regular fat, but your intestines can't absorb it. That means delicious, satiating potato chips that essentially slide right through you, Olestra. <laughs> It was a dieter's dream when it was marketed in the 90s during the low-fat craze. It was also a massive pain in the gastrointestinal area, to be precise. It became notorious for its warning of abdominal cramping and loose stools. (laughs) But they're saying it might actually be good for you. It could help rid your body of a dangerous toxin. Uh, This person says, I ate a lot of wow chips during the... Oh, light products are not any better. Yeah. So basically, they're saying it might be better for you to evacuate... Hold on. This person is saying they still have phantom stomach pains (laughs) 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 from eating chips in the 90s. Yeah. And there was also Fen Fen was huge when I was a kid. That was um, Fen Fen. Fen Fen was like speed. And so (laughs) all the moms were on Fen. My mom took Fen Fen too. Oh, right. Like diet pills. Yeah. Right. The Fen Fen diet. That was huge too. And it'll make you jittery and crazy. Yeah. Remember an episode of Saved by the Bell that I do. Jesse went on Fen Fen. I need these caffeine pills or I'm not going to get A's. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Yeah. A metaphor for crystal meth. She should have just done the meth. Yeah. Isn't this funny? People did not give an F in the 90s. Okay, but going on. So this is another dad hack. So my dad, oh, another hack. My dad got an apartment and they had, hold on. So my dad got an apartment and they had a coffee pot that came with the apartment. So the bathroom in the apartment is upstairs. So my dad was so lazy. He would just piss in the coffee pot in the kitchen and dump the piss in the kitchen (laughs) Sounds like a dad hack. That sounds like something my dad would have done too. And the, this is the best part is that the coffee pot came with the apartment. So the next person is going to drink out of his pea pot. Ugh, dude, <laughs> that is so foul. Yeah, I could see myself doing that alone. I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, might have done that one alone. Like in college, we definitely had yeah. creative ways to piss yes. in places. Yes. You know, like I think... I think I mastered the peeing while walking trick. What? You yeah. can do that? Yeah. It's not it's not easy to not get pissed on your shoes, but you could do it. Wait. <laughs> you need to, like, if you're walking with the group, you need to be ahead of the pack or behind everyone and then walk backwards. Like, it's so that, also that no one walks in your piss. And what, do you just pee on the floor? Yeah. You just unzip and then you just kind of, like, you, uh, that uh, is wild. like, if you're skiing, it's kind of like a pizza slice. You just spread your legs so that, like, and then just kind of <laughs> waddle and it, like, does, like, a zigzag yeah. pattern on See, the you're, concrete. you're a degenerate. Like, you are yeah, on another made, level. We made, ur- like, outdoor urinals 
um, okay. on our roof and stuff. Oh my god! See, boys love peeing outside. Boys, yeah, love cool it. ways to pee is is, is, the best. is pretty high on the yeah. list. I don't blame you. I don't hate you for it. I got you. Okay, uh, one more hack, and we'll do a couple of fails, and then I have to go. I got to go to an appointment. Uh, okay, let's see. We have two boys, three and nine. I thought of your boys squeezing the crap out of the bottles of shampoo. Oh, they do. I thought, why not just keep some old bottles and have them already filled with water or something else? When they get in there, they can squeeze that cold-ass water. <laughs> It's cold as fuck all over the place. <laughs> Keep the actual shampoo out of reach for them. That's smart. I also thought of maybe getting some fun ketchup and mustard bottles for them to squeeze and squirt at each other. I think it's more the sensation of squeezing something and causing some chaos. You know, fucking some shit up. Piss on me. Love you guys, Bernie. Not a bad thought, Bernie. Um, here, uh, and I, you're right. You have to get the actual bottle with the actual branding and stuff because kids know when you're trying to pull one over on them. But I have to get I have to get to match the color. Like maybe do like food coloring and 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 water. I think that's a good one. Okay. Um, no, I'm gonna close on mom hacks. We'll do fails next time. I like the I like to close on a positive note. Oh, uh, let's do this laundry hack video. I fucking love this. I'm just gonna close on this last one because I do have to run. This is the best thing I've seen. Hey, Christina, here's my mom hack. Hold on, for getting laundry down to the basement laundry room. Okay, so this is how she does it. Since my kids were toddlers, they'd sit at the bottom of the stairs as I threw the laundry at them. My kids love getting in the face with dirty laundry. My favorite, when dad's dirty undies, get them right in the face, keep them high and tight. Raylene, you gotta see this video she's attached. This is so fucking great. <laughs> Hi, Christina, I've got a great mom hack for you. This is a fun way to get the laundry down the stairs to the basement while you have little kids. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready, bud? <laughs> ready? Incoming! <laughs> ready for more? Here comes more. <laughs> <laughs> they love it. Ready for some more? <laughs> Loves it. Loves it. Now the goal is to hit them in the face with the laundry. <laughs> yes. That is always their favorite. Ready? Here we yes, go. Yes, it is. <laughs> Oh, almost. Ready? Here it comes. No. No. <laughs> oh, we got to get a good one. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Loves it. Ah. <laughs> Loves it. See that shit? My kids love this. We've done it for years. Hopefully it helps other moms. Bye. Thank you for that one, Raylene. That's amazing. They do. They like to participate. You know what toddlers love? They love picking up dog poop. So when I pick up Bitsy's dog poop, they, you know, they love to see poop. Was that poop? Let me see the poop. They just love all that stuff. Okay, one more, one more. This one's good. Um, I have a few mom hacks that go hand in hand. I'm a junior varsity mom to my daughter, eight, pregnant with number two, and an aunt to 11 more, 11 more life suckers. Holy cow. Since my daughter was about two, I've always had a designated drawer in the fridge, cabinet in the kitchen, and shelf in the pantry that are accessible to the kids. I put healthy snacks on the pantry shelf and stock the fridge drawer with fruit and pre-cut veggies. I then have a stash of kids' dishes, plates, cups, the works in the kitchen cabinet. The kids know they are allowed to eat anything in their two designated spots at any point that they feel hungry. On Saturday mornings, this is a lifesaver because... They can go right for the snacks and have a little something while mom gets to sleep in a little and don't have them coming in asking for breakfast. Not only do I get a few extra minutes of sleep on a Saturday, it has taught my daughter healthy portion sizes and responsibility for learning how to make her own meals. She is now able to do almost all meal prep for packing her lunches, making sandwiches, making sure she has fruit and veggies with every meal. She also loves to get, sorry, loves to get to help prep slash cook dinners with me when I get home from work. Along the same lines, I have a tall seven drawer Rubbermaid tower in her room on Sundays. We lay out all their outfits for the week and one outfit goes in each drawer. The kids know right where everything is every morning and never have to ask where their socks are. God, I love this. This saves so much time in the morning trying to get out uh, out the door for work and school. In addition, cuts down significantly on laundry during the week. They know what the clothes they wore that day going to the dirty laundry, and they know exactly what they are wearing the next day. Love you, Kirsten. 
Hope these hacks help. Keeping them as high and tight as they go over my growing belly. Your Colorado cool mom, Kaylee. Callie or Kaylee? Thank you. I like that idea, especially about the plastic Rubbermaid stuff in the room and the snacks. Imperative. Yeah, that's great. Teach them early to be self-reliant, uh, of course. I think that's really, really important and great. Okay. Well, that was a huge show, you guys. We covered a lot of ground. Um, email me the disgusting things you do alone. I love hearing your nasty food treats. Uh, where my mom's at at gmail.com. Call me, leave a voicemail, 213-375-5184. And until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's at?